Merhaba herkese. Affınıza sığınarak bugün İngilizce konuşuyorum. Çok fazla yabancı misafirimiz olduğu için. Hello, I am Pınar Seyhan Demirdağ. I am an AI director and the co-founder of the AI production company Seyhan Lee. Today I will be talking to you about AI art. For those that are not familiar or a little bit familiar, I'm pretty sure that you know it from Mid Journey, Dali or Stable Diffusion. Today we will be diving deep into the world of the wonderland of AI art and only by the end of my talk that you will understand why a talk about AI art is titled Humans Are Amazing. I want you to take your phones out and take your notepad and write the title of my talk please. Just take a minute. You will understand by the end of the uh, by the end of my talk. Um, this may be one of the most educational presentations around AI and AI art in general that you will be witnessing because it is designed to eliminate our fears, limitations and setbacks around AI. So let's get into it. The reason why I'm here this morning, this afternoon in front of you is because something one in a trillion happened to me in 2017. I was minding my own business in uh, Europe uh, the f bottom row is my body of war art as an artist. I used to be in an artist partnership with a Dutch woman called Viola. We signed our work under our first names, Pinar and Viola. We did these very eclectic, ecstatic fashion patterns. And one day, we received a phone call, email, from Google. I'll be, it will be a comical translation of the email exchange. Hey, Pinar and Viola, this is Google. Yeah, which Google? Google Europe headquarters. Sounds good. So we invented AI art in our lab and it looks like your body of work. Come again? Wh wh say what? We invented AI art. I mean, they didn't per se invent it, but they're one of the first uh, corporations that did really cutting edge uh, tests around um, computational uh, uh, visualization of uh, ad advanced uh, adversarial generative networks. And what you're seeing on the top is the, is the result of Alexander Morvincev, a Google engineer's test in trying to visualize how artificial neural networks build features around us. Say you want to visualize a snake or a basket or a car, how slowly generative networks are building the features of objects. That discovery, which was the very important part of invention of AI art, looked like my body of work as an artist. So I found myself in the center of the conception of AI art. But today, and this was, by the way, the results. This, um, me and Viola, my former work partner, we created these very beautiful, ecstatic, eclectic fashion patterns by using AI back in 2018. And this was the first time in the world that an artist that has no understanding of code, which is us, got to make art with AI. But today, I will be talking to you about the biggest bias in AI. If I, I mean, if you're part of this AI circles, you'll be like, yeah, I know what she's gonna talk about. She'll be like, woman and man or racial bias. But I would like to surprise you in introducing a new angle, which is humanity's inferiority complex. We're like, what does she mean by that? What I mean is that our constant admiration for data, our constant diminishing for human power that invented all the data and then all the computation power, the humans who invented AI, the humans who invented GPUs and CPUs and parallel processing. If you're like, yeah, like I'm a, I'm a student or I'm a housewife, what do I have to do about like AI and why do I care? Is because when one person awakens their fears and misconceptions around any subject, they unconsciously awaken a thousand others. And as long as we will have an AI bias, which is a fear of putting AI on a pedestal and humans inferior, we will be unconsciously contributing to the making of Skynet in um, Terminator. So in the next four slides, I will be showing you works from our studio, Sehan Lee. These are entirely generated by AI with the help of humans. And I want you to ask your heart and your mind about what what these make you feel. So this, uh, this image is created by humans by using AI, by typing to the machine, I wanna see a nice landscape of in America with mountains and waterfalls. This is an immersive experience that is currently showcased at um, London, uh, the Outernet, London's entertainment district. 
it is again entirely generated by AI. There is no hand drawing, there is no mm, digital drawing. We guided the machine only with code. This is a glimpse into the future of cinema. As you can recognize, this is uh, Johnny Depp from Pirates of the Caribbean. It is again entirely generated by using AI art. I know you'll be like, but his face is morphine, it's not really credible. Fine, give us two years and you will not be able to make a difference between Johnny Depp himself as the Pirates of the Caribbean and the Johnny Depp that we will be creating only with the power of the machine. And the last one, this one uh, is, uh, is created by our studio. It's a, um, like a glimpse into the future of openers, like before a TV show or a film starts. Yeah, it's like uh, Superman, Batman all together. Again, no human drawing, no human digital drawing involved. And I want to ask you all, how did that make you feel? I will be showing you a few words, and I want you to raise your hands if ever they, uh, they skip a beat in you. I don't get AI. How many of you don't get AI? I want to see hands, or you all get AI. Are you all AI experts? Cool. Why aren't you speaking? Great. These ones, these ones. OK, I would say 20% of the room. Yeah, AI makes art now. Yeah, great. How many of you think that, yeah, what the hell, AI makes art? Yeah, I would like you. I get you. AI is developing rapidly. I think we can all agree, right? OK, great. Almost like 80% of the room. AI art is not art. Yeah, I would say 15%. Great. AI is going to replace all of us and all our jobs. This is the biggest fear in the collective. Thank you. I would say 75% of the room. I'm going to destroy all of these uh, fears and misconceptions. Let's start. I don't get AI. There's nothing not to get about AI. You don't need to be an expert to get AI. AI is simply a tool. Let me prove it to you. How, how somebody makes an artwork. A human gets an idea. Human gets an easel. Human gets a palette. And human gets a brush. And an artwork is created. There's nothing not to get about that. The same goes with AI. Human comes up with an idea, uses an algorithm, or even a UI, a simple UI with a complex algorithm at the back, but you don't even need to see the algorithm. And then you make art. Hereby, four different, um, so if you want to understand AI art as an umbrella, like think about food. Under food, you have caviar, soup, stews, and salads. It's the same. I mean, it's similar. With AI art, you have different algorithms called Anime GAN, The Forum, Style GAN, JAX. These are simply some of the examples. The Forum and JAX are quite similar. You type words to the machine, and then you watch the machine create images that follow your guidance. Anime GAN, you can turn any content into the look and feel of an anime only by code. And Style GAN creates these morphing images, like the idea of one another becoming one, which is quite exciting. So this was the first argument. We're over that. AI art, there's nothing not to get about AI or AI art. It's simply a tool in the service of humanity. So when next time a friend of yours says, this AI is so complex, I don't get it. I don't get it. You'll be like, I got it. It means a tool. Second one, AI is developing rapidly. I understand why you may think so, but AI is not developing rapidly. Humans are advancing AI rapidly. That's the key, the use of the word humans. Uh, in 1958, the first artist that started to make experiments with generative, a generative art was Vera Molnar. And then, as you are seeing, between 1958 and 2014, there's a huge gap. That period is called AI winter. No researcher got funding for their research proposal because it was so scary for people to deal with AI because of films like Stanley Kubrick's 2001 Space Odyssey. But then research picked up. Between 2014 and 2015, three very important individuals came up with computer vision notebooks, uh, models, that are called GAN Diffusions and Deep Dream. Alexander Morvinsev, Sasha Sol, Dick Stein, and Ian Goodfellow wrote very important mathematical papers that gave rise to the birth of AI art. And I got the pleasure to work with the, one of the very inventors of AI art, Alexander Morvinsev. 2018, the patterns that I have shown you earlier was the first time a human that has no understanding of code get to make art with AI. I'm, I'm that person, one of the two. I'm very happy to say that. 2018, the same year, a French collective of three boys sold an artwork for $400,000 at Christie's. This made the news. It added to the popularization of the AI art. 2020, OpenAI came up with, I'm sorry, I don't know the names of their team, but very distinct individuals. 
came up with the first time uh, the model that allows us to type something and get an image. And 2022 is the year where AI art became an international craze with Midjourney, Daniel Holtz and Daniel Russ, David Holtz and Daniel Russell coming together for Midjourney. Uh, Emad Mosk, the owner of Stability AI, promising to keep uh, AI art open source and receive $101 million. And as you have probably heard, uh, Google, Imogen, Fenki, and Meta are coming out with text to video outcomes. So as you can see, there's no such a thing as like this general AI that is inventing things on its own, and we're like watching the AI invent things as humans. We humans, from mathematicians to artists like myself, we are contributing to the advancement of AI. Third one, AI art is not art. I feel ya, I felt the same in the beginning. I'm gonna show you, by the way, here is my antithesis to AI art is not art. Artists use their creative imagination and AI tools to make art. Let me show you. What is art, right? Something, it has to do with your heart, it has to do with your consciousness, it is unique to your imagination, it's unique to your artistic sensitivity. This is, um, <laughs> it's very funny, for those that know, like a bit of insiders of AI art, Stable Diffusion Discord has this subsection called Epic Failures. If you wanna have a little laugh, download Discord and go to Stable Diffusion's Discord. Where you, there you will see simply people using this tool called Stable Diffusion, typing some words and getting really like disgusting, funny results. So I would like to show you this, followed by these images by the AI artist called Kali Yuga. She creates these very sensitive fant fantasy, Americana, very original, visually very appealing images. So with these two examples, I would like to show you and make you understand that just because you are using a tool, that doesn't mean that you are making art. Since when have we credited the camera that Helmut Newton used? Since when we credited the camera that Steven Spielberg used to make his films? We never did. That's why I find it quite irrelevant to credit, honestly, AI when we are making art. Just like I'm not crediting a brush artist or a hand brush when Rembrandt makes a painting. So AI art is not art, it would be not correct because the consciousness of the artist is making art. AI is simply facilitating the download of the art that the artist is receiving. And AI is replacing our jobs. This one is my favorite because it's the biggest fear in the collective consciousness and I understand. Of course, it is the first time humanity is faced with a tool that is not, humans don't need to touch it, humans don't need to type it, humans don't need to use it. The tool itself is creating, generating things. We only have to watch and guide the machine to do that. Of course, with every advanced technology, jobs will be lost and new jobs will be gained. It's all a matter of our perspective that will put us in the job loss category or the one that is gained a new job category. So instead of saying AI is replacing our jobs, Let's change our lingua franca into new job opportunities arise with each new technology. I would like to introduce you with a little guy. His name is Knocker Upper. In the beginning of 1920s, these boys exist where you just had to give them like a couple of shillings and they would knock on your door, knock on your window at 4 a.m. because back in the days there were no alarm clocks. So this boy, this little boy lost his job. What shall we think about it? You know, it's very sad. Maybe he gained a new job in an um, alarm clock factory. I don't know. Or what shall we do? We, own, we all own an Apple Watch. We all own an Apple phone. Shall we cry for him? Because just because we have a new phone that he's out of job, we shouldn't. I would like to introduce you with a new job opportunity that has risen with AI. We have made this image. We are currently training a group of AI artists to become AI whisperers. These people can translate the desires of a director on set into the image that he, she would like to see. Let's say that the director said, I would like to see an image with like um, a light in, a, in a, a sitting room. In order to translate the vision of a director, the AI whisperer needs to write these very specific words, a cinematic wall composed, misty shot race. So this is the end of my talk. I'm coming, yes. So this is the proof that new writing words may not be your thing, but there will always be new job opportunities for things that you would like to do. And now my very last 
very last breaking of the fear. We always hear AI is amazing, data is amazing, machines are amazing. For the 15 minutes that you have been watching me talk, I have shown you the power of humans, how humans invented AI, how humans are developing AI, how humans are making art with AI. I want you to take your phones now in your hands and read me collectively what I made you write. What is the title of my talk? One, two, three, say it. Humans are amazing. Thank you. Thank you.